Welcome back to the Lost in Transit podcast, everyone. It is the second week of 2019. I am your host, Spud Groshong. And on this week's edition, I just wanted to give you a little year in review of my 2018. So if you know from previous podcasts or if you happen to know me, uh, you know that I'm predominantly a solo traveler. So the only people I've ever really traveled with are people who I've met on a trip and spent some time with traveling with them. It wasn't until this year that I really left home with someone and came home with that same person. Make sense? Okay. So I traveled with two different people this year. One is my girlfriend, Jessica, and the other is my friend, Brian. Brian is an incredible photographer. I'll link below his Instagram and maybe his website so you can check out his stuff. It's pretty great. Jessica, if you follow my Instagram, I'm sure you've seen pictures with her in them. And well, even though that was new this year, I learned that traveling is fun with other people and it kind of opens you up to different stuff did a lot of things this year that I probably wouldn't have normally done. Mostly with Jessica, because she's who I took three out of the four big trips I did with. That being said, 2018 started off with a pretty, well, I guess it would be 2017, ended with a pretty funny little adventure from Bangkok to Siem Reap, Cambodia. We had taken the, the slow train which takes like six, seven, eight, sometimes nine or ten hours, depending on how slow it goes, from Bangkok to the border. Or from the train station, you get in the tuk-tuk and you go to the border. Uh, So back to the train. The train was packed. It was nuts to butts for like five or six hours. It was nuts. I just said nuts like eight times. It was crazy. At one point in time, I could lift my feet off the ground And I didn't move. It was the most packed I'd ever seen this train. And I've been on this train like three or four times. Once it finally cleared out, the train ride was great. Uh, The sun had started to set slowly and, you know, the day started to end. But not without us seeing some of the beautiful Thai countryside before. Um, So once we got to the train station, we hopped in at Tuk Tuk. And it took us straight to the... Straight to the border. No problems there. Through immigration, all the way through what I like to call Hill Valley in Back to the Future 2, when Biff is owning a casino because it looks like it's just decimated, but there are casinos on either side, kind of in a no-man's-landy area between the Thai immigration and the Cambodian immigration. It's kind of amazing. And it's even more amazing at night because it only feels more seedy. So we got through Cambodian immigration, and there's all these people always trying to get you to ride in their car to Siem Reap, because at that time of night, there are no trains, and it takes three hours to get there. So the first guy who comes up to us says it'll be $40 a piece. That's pretty much normal. So we went with him, threw our bags in the trunk, got in the car with two other people. Uh, I think they were Germans. Anyway, we paid the man and I paid him more because I didn't have exact change. Anyway, he never came back with change. He only came back. And then we basically got into a fight. It wasn't physical. It was verbal about the change. And he said that was his fee and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Jessica and I got out of the car, grabbed our bags and said, never mind. Give me all my money. We're not riding with you. At that point in time, the Germans also spoke up and were like, whoa, wait, he charged you how much? We're getting out too. So once he realized that he was not going to have people in his car, he decided to give us back our money. And we all got in the car and we all rode down the road. It was a decent ride. There was good conversation. It was dark and there are weird neon lights in the fields. It's interesting. But nothing exciting happened. I'd booked uh, Airbnb, I think, before we'd left Bangkok, 
and I hadn't heard from our host. So once we got to see him rape, it was late. It was rainy since I hadn't heard from him or her. I don't even remember who it was. I'd canceled it and booked something that had a book, an Insta book or whatever they call it on Airbnb and had the tuk tuk driver that picked us up in a parking lot in the middle of the rain, drop us off at the Airbnb. It turned out to be a guest house that was booked. They had no rooms available. And yet again, I got into another argument with a guy who said I should have called before I booked on Airbnb. After lots of frustrating moments, he said we could sleep in the lobby, which there were clearly bugs on the floor, and we didn't want to do that. So, after a long phone call with Airbnb, we got our money back, and we had our tuk-tuk driver, the same one who picked us up, because he somehow waited around for us. We had him take us to a hotel. So, the next morning, we got up, we went to Angkor Wat, we spent a very large amount of time in Angkor Wat, from like before sunrise till like one or two in the afternoon. And that night while I had Wi-Fi, the night before while I had Wi-Fi, I had booked another room online. Well, I after Angkor Wat, we got our bags from our hotel and gone over to the other hotel. They did not have rooms available. So somewhere between there and the internet, there was also a flaw. After a while, Jessica and I just decided to wander. And stop at every guest house we could find and see if they had any rooms. And we stopped at five or six before we stopped at a place called The Local. Uh, and The Local was owned by an American man who, oddly enough, had a closed guest house. He offered us a room for peanuts and was beyond hospitable. So if you end up in Cambodia... In Siem Reap, go to the local, even if it's just for a drink or some food. They're great people. Tell them Spud and Jess sent you. They probably don't remember us, but, you know, better that way than not at all. Um, so, yeah, that trip was great. Went to Cambodia. We went back to Thailand. Uh, and then we had a layover in South Korea. My second trip of the year was with my friend Brian. We had gone to South America. We went to Chile and we went to Bolivia. So in Chile, we went to San Pedro de Atacama, which is in the Atacama Desert. It's meant to be the driest place on earth. I'm going to say about half the time we were there, it fucking rained, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing. It allowed for some interesting moments in our little photographic journey. Yeah, we'd spent a lot of our time there just driving around and taking photos. It was outstanding. Uh, If you've never been to the Atacama Desert, I advise you to go. If you've never been to Bolivia, I advise you to go. At least south of... uh, Salar de Yuyuni, I can't say the word. The salt flats in Yuyuni. So that trip was good. There wasn't anything too out of the ordinary that happened on that trip. We were delayed on our trip to Bolivia by like a few hours because of snow in the mountains. But other than that, it was it was great. Um the third trip of the year was in the at the beginning of the summer. Jessica and I had gone to Europe. I'd been to Europe a million times. England is practically, oddly enough, a second home with work and such. But Jessica met me in England. We'd taken the train to Paris. We'd taken the train from Paris to Monaco. Monaco to Venice. Venice to San Marino. San Marino to Rome. Now... I was trying, and I still am trying, to tick off some of the smaller countries in Europe. 
uh, from a list of countries and territories set by the Century Travelers Club. I'll link it below. Um, which is why we went to places like Monaco and the Vatican City and San Marino. Um, I remember being on tour once years and years ago and playing in Italy and seeing San Marino from a far distance and being infinitely curious about it, but not having time to actually go. So I'm very glad I got to go. It was a little fortress on the top of a mountain with narrow cobblestone roads and beautiful views. Uh, if you go take the gondola, it makes it just that much better. Um, Venice was something I had no expectations for. Previous experiences in Italy had made me actually hate Italy. So I was kind of indifferent. But we went. Uh, the canals were cool. It was very picturesque. It was overrun with tourists. The place we stayed smelled of mold. And Jessica got congested and had to get some weird Italian medicine, which made her insanely loopy. My advice, bring cold medicine. But yeah, all in all, that trip was excellent. And the last trip of the year we took, Jessica and I, was to Singapore and Bali. This trip kind of started as a complete catastrophe. Initially, we had already started to plan going to India at this time, and due to some work things, India got pushed aside, and then we had decided to go to Vietnam and applied for visas, and we got approved for visas, and then some work stuff came up, and we weren't sure if I was going to be able to get in and out of Vietnam two separate times, so we just decided to go to Bali. That being said, Bali is amazing. It was beyond what we had ever expected. Um, we spent most of our time in the Ubud, Ubud area. We rented scooters. That was scary as hell. I realized that I am a shitty driver but fearless, apparently, which was fun. Uh, the beaches were outstanding. The waterfalls in North Bali were amazing. We swam in waterfalls and jumped off waterfalls, and it was great. We also splurged one day and stayed at the Munduk Molding Plantation, which is a, a kind of expensive resort. Uh, high in the mountains in near Munduk on Bali. Um, I'll link that below as well. I'm going to say, if you're with a significant other, that this place is a must. I'm sure you've seen it on Instagram, the infinity pool that goes into nowhere and little bungalows everywhere. The food was great. The service was outstanding. I think for... A night stay, four meals, two massages, and a partridge in a pear tree. We paid like just shy of $300 American, which sounds like a lot. But after spending practically no money the entire time that we were there, it was worth it. I would go back and spend much, much more time there. Just there. There were lots of waterfalls. Not too far down the road, too. Which... If you're like me, you like waterfalls. So those were the trips. Those are the trips that I took in 2018. Cambodia, Thailand, South Korea, England, France, Monaco, Italy, San Marino, the Vatican City, Singapore, and Indonesia. I'd say I had a pretty awesome year. I didn't really get to cross off too many countries on that Century Travelers list. I think I hit four. I also forgot to just say that I went to Chile and Bolivia. I think in total it was 13 countries. Yeah, four new ones. Which isn't bad. It isn't great. Initially, I wanted it to be more. Um, but some of the shit that I learned 
with traveling with a partner. It taught me to be more open-minded. In Thailand, Jessica and I went to... Uh, I don't actually know the name of the sanctuary, but they have a place called I Love Fants Lodge in the Elephant Sanctuary, and it's not like a big for-profit thing. It's more of a rehabilitation for the wild sort of thing. Um, she did a lot of research, and she very much cares for animals, so this was what we found along the way that seemed the most humane. Um, and I would have, like, like I said, I would have never gone to something like this, but she was ecstatic and it was fun. We got to feed elephants and help them wash them. And we ended up staying at this lodge, uh, where they have four rooms and they feed you dinner and breakfast. Um, but our room overlooked part of the area where they keep the elephants. Well, not keep but like where they allow the elephants to roam. So as the sun was setting, there was a few elephants drinking from the lake and it was, it was rather beautiful. In PP on the same trip on PP Island for my birthday, we went there uh, and we rented a boat and went out and saw Maya Bay and kind of did that whole thing around the island, which the last I heard Maya Bay was closed due to, excessive tourism but on the other side of the island we went snorkeling i'd never been snorkeling in my entire life and i've been to that island many times uh, and snorkeling i had no no idea what to expect and i put the mask on and jumped in the water and shoved my face and <laughs> under the water and saw to you know quote aladdin a whole new world it was colors and things i'd never seen before fish i'd never seen we saw a jellyfish swimming in bright bright colored fish and coral and just the coolest things that i were right underneath us i would advise everyone to try snorkeling i'm definitely afraid of what's under that water but i'm still interested in going snorkeling again maybe even scuba diving one day only time will tell on that same thailand trip we rented jet skis in patong we went to patong because well i know there's good food there and jess had never been um but yes we rented jet skis and we hadn't been in the water for more than 10 minutes before we crashed them into each other. Then there was this big ordeal with the person we rented them from. He took us to the tourist police. He wanted us to pay like $2,500 for them because they needed to go get fixed and this and that. And we argued that they're not worth that. And he was saying that he would also have to compensate his employees for loss of wages we ended up coming to an agreement for a much smaller number and we were okay with it. Jessica was a little, Jessica was a little, little frustrated with the number. But after explaining to her that we've both spent more money in one night doing something completely dumber than crashing jet skis into each other, she seemed okay with it. It was a lot of fun, and I giggle about it still a year later, almost every day. In Bolivia, they kind of gave us a schedule, I guess. Because at one point in time, Brian and well, to go to Bolivia, Brian and I had to take a four-day excursion. Um, but due to it being so wet, our schedule changed completely. And we didn't get to see the things we were supposed to see at the times they wanted us to see them. We were, we were supposed to drive across the salt flats one morning. And it was like, I think we were four Jeeps following each other the whole time. And that morning we ended up taking road regular roads and not getting to the salt flats until the early afternoon. Which was way later than when we were told we were supposed to be there. Because we were supposed to be there for sunrise. Um... 
and a lot of people were very upset. So one thing it taught me is that no matter what the schedule says, don't get upset if things change. It's something that I should have learned from taking trains all over the world and traveling with people, but it still happens. We all get upset. It was still a great experience. We spent a lot of time in the Jeep. We drove a lot. But the things we saw, the fact that we saw the salt flats in Bolivia, I'll, I, words will never explain. The fact that I got to experience 15,000 feet in altitude and barely could breathe, that was great. So, like I said, 2018 was a great year for me for travel. I loved it. I learned that I enjoy traveling with people. People whom I cherish. My advice to everyone is try and travel solo, but also try and travel with someone. Solo travel is much scarier. You have to talk to people. You're forced to make friends. When you travel with someone, you don't necessarily have to make friends. I'm sure sure it's better to have that rock and still make friends. But it's also better to have somebody to bounce ideas off of. It's also better to split costs with and it can be cheaper. But most importantly, just travel. See the world. Now remember, you can email me at lostintransitpc at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook at Lost in Transit Podcast, on Instagram and Twitter at Lost in Transit PC. I'll link all of the things that I talk about in the show in the show notes. And most importantly, get lost. Mm-hmm.